the objective of a firm is to maximize profit, okay? But some people now say, you know, this is not quite right, uh, because uh, a firm has some social responsibility, okay? It is called CSC. Uh, sorry. CSR, sorry, CSR. C, corporate. Corporate. Social responsibility. But you know how much more you would like a firm to do? That's that's really the big problem. If you look at you know how much uh, resources that a company you know put into this kind of uh, efforts, I think it's doubtful. You know that's my opinion. Okay, let's move on. So short run and long run, what's the difference? Short run, you know, there at least one input that is fixed. Okay, it has fixed input and long run, everything is variable. And that semester we talk about it, we also have something we call very long run. If it is very long run, what happened? Everything is variable. Okay, every input is variable. Also, the technology is variable. Uh, you know, there are some case studies in the book. Okay, please read the case study on your own. We will not uh, discuss in, detail, in details. WorldCom is a very famous telecom company. Okay, uh, it used to be the third, I mean, as far as I can remember, the third largest telecommu com uh, telecommunication company in the U.S. But, you know, because uh, some of the issue there and no, the managers, okay, not quite uh, live up to their standard, and so it is bankrupt now. Capital goes capital, right? Uh, production, production function. Production function assumes the best scenario of production, so it's most efficient and absolute application of the uh, technology available. So this is the best. Uh, production situation. And now let's look at this table, okay? There is also exercise, okay? The problem sets like this at the uh, assigned as homework. So you want to be able to do this. Okay, here is input, okay, labor. So, and this is acres of land. So you have two variables. One is labor and one is land, okay? And this is unit of labor, okay, and this is unit of land. And this is the production label. So if you look at this, uh, I mean, when we turn uh, to the next page, you're going to see MP goes down. Okay, what is MP? Marginal product. TP, total product. MP goes down, we say diminishing returns of marginal product. Okay, diminishing return. Why? It is a little bit difficult to explain, but I have told you before, if you get a lemon, right, if you get a lemon and you want to squeeze juice out of it, right, the first squeeze you get a lot, right, and if you feel going to squeeze again, how much you get? You get less, and then even more times, even less. So it is called diminishing return of marginal product, just like diminishing, re uh, diminishing marginal utility. For some good coffee, drinks, whatever, the first cup of coffee going to give you very good satisfaction, right? But if you drink the second cup, the third cup, the fourth cup, what happened? Your marginal utility goes down. And if you drink even more, what you get? You get half burnt, right? Okay. Hot burn. Xie Xin Yu, what's hot burn? You burn your heart. What's hot burn? Wu Zhiting, what's hot burn? No idea? Yu Huang Yuan, hot burn. No idea. Chen Xizai. 
陈其才，我差不。No. You know, there's a commercial advertisement. You see quite often in on TV. Okay? Liu Yuxiang. Liu Yuxiang. What's our burn? It happened. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Why is called heartburn? It actually is is related to your stomach, right? It's not, but you know, it's close to your heart. Here, because uh, the acid, okay, the acid turns up, right? Okay. Anyway, so you have average product, marginal product. So now let me draw a diagram for you. So here is the amount of input we say labor right quantity total product okay and it looks like this okay and here we have MPAP it is marginal product average product um, the example I gave you last semester is a rocket right when a rocket count down ignites ignition starts right the oil engine is burning the fuel and push the hot air down and because push higher down the rocket goes up right but you can see for the first few 10 seconds or for first 10 seconds you can still see the rocket okay just above your head okay but then for the less for the next one minute the rocket accelerates, okay? And for the next 10 minutes, it accelerates more and more and more. So what happened? So in terms of distance, right? The first few seconds, the distance is very small. But then it goes up, goes up, and up. And then what happened is that there's a limit on the engine. So, I'm not quite sure about the limit, but anyway, there's a limit of the speed. It cannot accelerate more than that, okay? Uh, by the way, which kind of object, okay, travels the fastest, okay? Question, which kind of object travels the fastest on Earth? Yeah, Yifang, what travels fastest? To the best of our knowledge, what travels fastest? Cars, zebra, leopard, human beings, whatever. Excuse me? Which object travels fastest? Which object travels fastest? No idea. Chen Shi Chen Which object travels fastest? Exactly, right? Light. For rocket, you know, there's a limit on that. So, you know, in terms of the example we have, so for the first few seconds, it moves very short distance, but then later on it moves quite fast but there's a limit there right and after that okay the engine you know gonna I'm not quite sure how but you know let us use car as example right if you drive a car for a long time the engine gonna get overheat right and so it's gonna get more wear and tear and so well it is not running as smooth as it can. So then it's something like this. And this is what we call marginal product. And then here you have average product. Okay? So actually from this kind of relationship we can have we can divide the production into three stages. The first stage is here. 
in stage one, and here it is stage two, and here is stage three. So in stage one, the marginal product is still increasing. And to a certain point, of course, it's going down, but average product is always going up here. So the three stages of production, the first stage is from the production of zero to the maximum of AP. So there is maximum of AP, average product. And the second stage is the maximum of average product to the point where marginal product is equal to zero. The third stage is when marginal product is negative. Of course, the production level will not be in the third stage, right? Because you have to pay labor, pay capital, right? But what you get, your marginal product is negative. It doesn't make sense. So the production level will never be at the third stage. It could be stage one or stage two. But stage two is the best. Why? Because up to this point, right? You know that average product is still going up. Okay? Average product is still going up. So it doesn't make sense for you to stop here. So it should be somewhere around here. Okay? And so this is the... Uh, of course, this part is not uh, emphasized in the book, but you know, in uh, a lot of textbooks, they talk about this production stage. Okay, the feasible production stage is at the second stage. Okay, and so you have marginal product. Marginal product is decreasing. Okay, and here you have the formula, right? What is MP? MP is equal to the change in total product, okay? The change in total product due to the change in, uh, sorry, the change in total product due to the change in input. And so it will be D, total product is quantity, right? Q and DL. And for every product is the total production level divided by the amount of input you use. So it is the production level per unit of input. Production level per unit of input. This is the production changes due to the change in input. Okay? Let's move on. Um, if you check, okay, if you check the table here, I mean, if you, yeah, if you check the table here, when I say table, what is table? When I say table, what is table? Exactly, good. Okay? It is not the desk, not the table, not the kind of table. Okay? So this diagram, or sometimes we call figure, this diagram, this figure actually this comes from here. So uh, you read a book and check how, what's going on there. So you have three different kinds of uh, capital. The first one, is you have 25 acres, the second one 15, and the uh, first one is 5. And so you can see here is the production level and the difference there. So here is with the highest amount of capital, 25 acres. And here 15 acres, and here you have 5 acres. So let us check here. Okay, first of all, here it is production level, right? when it is five acre, okay? Be careful, that is follow all the numbers here. So when you have one unit of labor, the production level 70, right? And then two units of labor, 160, 220, 260, 390, 310, okay? Any question? Okay, now it is marginal product, okay? For marginal product, when you have zero units of labor to one unit of labor, the marginal product is 70, right? Okay? So from 0 to 70. And here it's from 70 to 160. So from 70 to 160, what's the marginal product of the second unit of labor? It's 160 minus 70. Okay? So it is 90. And here it is 220 
minus 160, so it has 60. And here you have 260 minus 220, so that's 40. 290 minus 260, so that's 30. Two, 310 minus 290, so that's 20. So you can see, modular product 70, 90, 60, so the first one 70, but then the second one is higher, but then after that is always decreasing. So that's what we call decreasing marginal product. And here, that's average product, okay? How to get average product? Because average product is production level divided by L, right? Production level divided by L. So 70, okay, 70 divided by 1, 160 divided by 2, then you get 80, and 220 divided by 3, okay? 260 but divided by 4, you get 65, right? 290 divided by 5, you get 58, and 310 divided by 6, that's what you get. So in your homework, there's, quest there's one question like this, okay? You want to fill in the blanks. Okay, diminishing marginal returns. If you have diminishing marginal returns, what does that mean? That means you have, okay, you have increasing marginal cost. Okay, you feel have diminishing marginal return, what does that mean? That means you put into the same amount of input, right? You put into the same amount of input, but the quantity you get is less and less. So what does that mean? So diminishing marginal return, diminishing marginal product implies increasing marginal cost. So these two come together. So this is a diagram from the numerical examples that we have in the book. So you will check the book and see what's going on. So basically, that is about the same thing as I have drawn on the whiteboard, right? Okay. Now we get to analyze the equilibrium and how we get that. So first of all, let's review a little bit what we have for consumers. So consumers, we have goods X, goods Y, right? And this is the budget line, okay? So budget line is PX times X plus P, sorry, PY times Y. So you get here, okay? So what is the slope of this budget line? It is minus PX over PY, okay? This is we call budget line because when we want to discuss uh, you know, how much consumer will buy X or Y, you need to have a budget, how much money he has. And then we need to have the preference. The preference is the indifference curve. Okay? So here is the indifference curve. What is the slope of the, of the indifference curve? It is M U X over M U sorry over M U Y okay and here is the slope P X P Y right so when the budget line tangent to the difference curve this is the point a consumer maximizes utility. And why? Because this is the, the price in the consumer's mind. This is the price in the market. So when the price in his mind is the same as the price in the market, then there's no way, no more need for any adjustment. So for example, let us say if we have a, let me do this. So let us say we have this indifference curve too, okay? And at this point, we have, okay, the red line here, okay, the red line here 
is the tangent to this indifference curve, okay? The red line here is the tangent to this indifference curve. So this is the slope of the indifference curve, okay? So, Gao Jia Yan. Punch line is here, right? And the slope of indifference curve is here. So at this point, let us say it is point two. Okay, so at point two, what should the consumer do to maximize profit? So let me ask you, at point two, this person, he likes X, Y more or Y more? X more or Y more? He loves X or loves Y? Are you sure? What? Why? Exactly. At this point, he loves X, right? Because he would like to sacrifice a lot of Y to get X. So at this point, he loves X. So he should consume more X. Buy more X and buy less Y. And here, it is flatter, right? If it is flatter, means this person loves Y. Okay, so he should buy more Y and less X. So the direction is here, and the direction is here. Okay, remember, we mentioned this in the test, right? So you have, okay, M, P, K over R greater than M, P, L over W, right? If it is something like this, it's just you use this as L, this as K, right? So basically, what I'm going to tell you is that the analysis of consumer behavior applies to producers, okay? And what is this called? The slope of the indifference curve is called MRS. Okay, what is MRS? Marginal rate, ma sorry, is here. No, it's not. Yeah, it's here. Uh, sorry, this is for producer. So for consumer, it's called MRS. Okay, for consumer, it's called MRS. Marginal rate of substitution. But for producer, there's one more word, technical. So it's called MRTS. Okay, MRTS. So I'm going to draw a diagram again, but you know, basically it's the same thing because in consumer you call it goods X, goods Y, but for producer you call input, right? This is gonna be labor, this is gonna be capital, or you can also call it X, call it Y, okay? And then this budget line, right? This budget line would be called ISO cost, okay? ISO cost. ISO means equal, okay? ISO means equal, and you have ISO quant. ISO quant means equal in quantity. And here, indifference curve, we say it is indifference curve, indifference of what? Of utility. Means it's the same utility. And so you have ISO quant, okay? Here, it is indifference curve. And then you have marginal rate of technical substitution for consumer, you have MRS. Basically, that's the same thing. So let me draw the picture again, okay? So the analysis of a consumer applies to that of a producer. It is all the same. So you have L, labor, capital. Here you have ISO cost for consumer value the budget line. And here you have ISO quant. So we have ISO quant for, pro, so for consumer that is called indifference curve. And they have to intersect, sorry. So here is the equilibrium. So for the equilibrium, you have negative MPL over MPK is equal to negative. Uh, here you will be the price of labor. Price of labor is W. And here it is price of capital, that's R. And what you get? You get MPL divided by W is equal to MPK 
divided by r. And so that's exactly the same you have uh, n u x over p x is over n u y over p y. And what is this? This is marginal product, marginal product of dollar. So each dollar you spend on labor and each dollar you spend on capital, the amount of marginal product is the same. Okay? Any questions? Okay, and so there will be the same adjustment when it is up here. Okay, actually labor will give you more contribution, so you should use more labor. And down here, you have higher contribution from capital. I mean, the contribution will be marginal capital, uh, marginal product, and so you're going to move up there. Okay? Basically, the story is the same. Okay. Uh, for consumers, you have perfect substitute and perfect complements. The same thing applies to uh, production, and we have deal with this in, we just talked about the, the, the final exam, right? L, LK is equal to 2L plus K. In this case, it is perfect substitute, okay? Basically, uh, one unit of capital, okay, can be substituted by two units of labor. Uh, sorry, the other way around, the other way around. Okay, so can anyone give me examples of perfect substitute? Huang Yixuan, is Huang Yixuan here? Okay, so can you give me example of perfect substitute? I mean, this use consumer will be easier, you know, for produce, uh, I mean, still you can get, get example, but for consumer, that's easier. Perfect substitute. Perfect substitute, for example, that is a pizza, right? You have big pizza and small pizza, medium pizza, right? Okay, perfect substitute. And perfect complement. Coffee with sugar or coffee with milk, okay? Uh, well, there's something called half and half, okay? In terms of coffee, you know, some pe when you go to the U.S., you know, people call half and half. What is half and half? Hong Kai Shen not here, right? Wu Yuxiang, what's half and half? Do you drink coffee? No, you don't. Li Yixiang. Yi Yifang. Half and half is milk. So, I mean, if you are not there, and in Taiwan, of course you say milk, right? But in the U.S. it calls something different. But as, why? I have no idea. Because I'm not a coffee person, I don't drink coffee. Okay, let's move on. And perfect complements, right hand shoes, sorry, right hand glove, left hand glove, right hand, right shoes, left shoes, okay? And this is the uh, isoquant for perfect substitute, okay, here. Because one unit of oak is equal to one unit of maple. Okay, can... Hong Kai-shen, what is oak? What is oak? What is maple? Maple should be familiar to you, right? Xie what is maple? Okay, Ye Yifang, you know it? Exactly. So, the maple leaf, which nation has maple leaf on their national flag? Even which nation has maple leaf on its national flag? Canada, Canada right? Okay. 
Okay, uh, you know, we don't want to get too much uh, details about this, but, you know, it's uh, the um, perfect substitute, the diagrams for perfect substitutes, and here that's the uh, perfect complements uh, for a production function like this. Okay, this is the diagram. So it's the same, right? It's the same as what we have done on consumer. Perfect substitute, perfect complements, the same kind of diagrams. Okay, and here is the case, right? Returns to scale. Okay, returns to scale. We say you have constant return to scale, increasing return to scale, and decreasing return to scale. Okay, let's do that again. And this, okay, this concept Okay, has a question in the uh, homework, so you want to be very familiar with this. So you have F, L, K is equal to Q, right? And then you have F, T, L, T, K, and then T, Q. Greater than, equal to, less than. So basically, as we have discussed it, we say, this makes sense, okay? This does not. This does not either, okay? And the reason is quite simple, right? If you can double your input and get something more than double, what happened? You're gonna to continue to expand, right? You're gonna to continue to expand. And if you double your input and what you get is less than double, so why should you pay more? You should pay less, right? So you should shrink the production. So for this one, you should expand the production. For this one, you should cut the production. And so expand to infinity and cut it to nothing. So it doesn't make sense. This is the one makes sense. So that's one of the reasons that uh, if you have read other books, we always, I mean, oftentimes they talk about Cobb Douglas, Cobb Douglas production function. And you have F, uh, that is the LK, right? And then L to A's power, K to B's power, and you're going to have A plus B greater than, equal to, less than 1. If it is greater than 1, okay, if it's greater than 1, that is increasing returns to scale, equals to 1, that is constant returns to scale. If it is less than 1, that is decreasing returns to scale. And you know, uh, why is it like this, okay? Sometimes, okay, sometimes we may have, okay, sometimes we may have increasing returns to scale. And the example I gave you is this. So let us say you want to make a box, okay? So if you want to make a box, you need to have six sides, okay? And each side, it is, say, one meter, okay, each side is one meter. And for this kind of makeup, what you get? You will get a box that's equal to one, two cubic meter, okay, one cubic meter. And what's your cost? So this is one of the area you to have, right? One side, the other side, so one times one times six, six square meter. So this is the product you have, and this is the cost you have. You have to have an area, let us say paper or wood, okay, whatever it is, to make a box, okay? Um, and then, suppose you want to make a bigger box, okay? The box is much bigger, so let us say, now it is two, it is two, and it is two. So what happened is that this box is going to be a meter cube, uh, sorry, a cubic meter, right? Because two, 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 you have three sides. So the volume will be a cubic meter. But what about the cost? The cost is two times two times six. So you get 24 square meter, okay? So you can see the cost is only four times more, okay? The cost is only four times more. But what about the volume? is eight times bigger, okay? And so, to a certain extent, you may have increasing returns to scale, but you wanna be very careful because the bigger the box, okay, the heavier it is, 
and also you need to be careful about the pressure. So for example, we use a pipe by. If it is a pipe, okay? For smaller pipe, okay, actually it only needs to take care of small pressure. But if it is a bigger pipe, sorry, you know, the pressure is much higher. So really, it needs more technology and also better materials. So it means that if you want to expand it, sorry, only to a certain extent. That's the reason I say uh, for increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale, you know, these two situations don't make much sense. The only thing that can exist in our real life is constant returns to scale. So for example, right, you can have one McDonald's restaurant and you copy it, you can have several hundred, several thousand, right? But for technology company, it is not that easy, even though sometimes it has the, we call economies of scale. Okay, so the, these are two different issues, okay? What we look at here is return to scale, okay? Return to scale. And now we're going to talk about another concept, it's called Uh, sorry, economies of scale. Economies of scale. Okay, return to scale we call Gui Mo Jingji. Okay, economy scale. Uh, sorry, return to scale. Sorry, return to scale Gui Mo Bao Zhou. Okay, return to scale Gui Mo Bao Zhou. Economies of scale. Okay, so what does this mean? It means Q goes up, LAC goes down. L means long term. Okay, L means long term. So these two are totally different concepts. Return to scale is you use the same proportion of input. Okay, you double it, triple it, quadruple it. Okay, but here it has nothing to do with the input. It just tells you that. Production level goes up, long run, average cost goes down. Okay, economy scale and returns to scale, these are two different concepts. Okay? Okay, let's move on. And here is an example about this. So returns to scale and the spacing of ISO coins. Okay? So you have production level at 100, 200, 300. Remember here, it is 1L, right? 2L, 3L. So this is re constant returns to scale, okay? You have double the input and double the production. Triple the input, triple the production, okay? And here, it is decreasing returns to scale. You double it, you get less than double. Okay, triple it gets then less than triple. And here, increasing returns. Okay, you get more out of it. Okay. Um, you know, in terms of specialization, it really means. Uh, so let us say, if you have increased your market, okay, you get more customers. Then of course you can use more advanced technology. Okay, to produce what you want. Okay, but you know, as you expand more and more, what what will happen? There will be some issues on management. So you said loss of managerial control and decreasing returns to scale. Because as your production level goes up, as your capacity increases, you know, there will be some issue on management, and that's it. Why we say. When a company grows too big, okay, it's not easy to get control. Uh, so we it said returns to varying proportions. So it means that uh, you wanna use different ratios of inputs 
and to match your production, okay? And then here you have showroom uh, total product curve. That's when we have one fixed input, uh, when we have one fixed input. So basically, this tells you a story, okay? You can have different levels of production, okay? Different levels of production. And at each production level, okay? So let me say, let me draw. This is total production curve. We can use average production curve. So here is L, and here is the total product, right? So let us say you can have something like this, okay? But suppose you project for a long term, then you can have something like this, okay? So at each different level of capital, okay, at each le different level of capital, you can trace the total production curve, and you can figure out what's going on there, okay? So here is what you get, okay? When we talk about cost, it will be easier to understand, okay? Okay, now, in D, we come to cost. So accounting costs and economic costs, here, in economics, we always talk about economic costs. So what's economic cost? That's opportunity cost, okay? So for example, if you buy a machine, okay, if you buy a machine, so let us say, okay, let us say TSMC, okay, Lu Yaoxiang, what is TSMC? No idea? Really? Zhang Zhewei, what is TSMC? Excuse me? What is T? Taiwan. What is S? Semiconductor. What is M? Manufacturing. What is C? Corporation. Okay, so let us say TSMC, <coughs> they want to uh, build a factory in Kaohsiung, right? And that's a done deal, okay? So a new factory, okay? But you know that. What about Intel? Intel also want to be a factory elsewhere, in the US, in Europe, right, in Asia. And so let us say, if so many companies like Toshiba, right, they also want to produce more semiconductors, because now there's a shortage, right? And suppose everyone builds new factory, what happened to supply? Supplies goes up, right? If supplies goes up, what happened to price? Price goes down. So let us say, if it ends up, the price, time's up? Okay, let's take a break. See you next week.